Data has leaked about romance options for the upcoming Mass Effect Andromeda, and Charlize Theron is going to play a bisexual agent. More on this in a second here at Queer Fidanci. Hi, welcome to Queer Fidanci, where I share LGBTQ and via media, the news, reviews, and good conversation. My name is Devin Jackson Randall, and today is Friday, which means it's time for the weekly update, where I share LGBTQ and via media news. This could be anything from casting announcements from Hollywood to upcoming Kickstarters and more. So let's get started. First off, Mass Effect Andromeda is coming out on Tuesday, March 21st, 2017, and I'm so excited. Just a couple more days, guys. I'm so ready to play this game. But anyway, some information about the game has been leaked. Data miners somehow had access to the game and were able to get into the files of the game. That's, don't do this step. They were able to get out some information revealing some of the other romantic interests in this game. So I'll read them all to you. First, a Vetra. Jal and PB are all bisexual, so both whatever gender character you play, you can romance these characters. In addition, if you play Scott Ryder, then you can romance Cora, Gil, uh, Dr. Carlisle, which we don't know who this person really is yet. We're assuming this is Harry Carlisle, who uh, is one of the first doctors you see when you start the game. Then we have Sarah Ryder, if you play the girl. Uh, then you can romance Liam and Suvi specifically on top of the bisexual characters. And then there are a few other unknown characters that we really haven't seen yet, but apparently they are romantic in some sense. In addition to that, uh, we suspect that there will be more characters that can be romanced. This is just the information that data miners were able to leak out there for us to find. In addition to that, apparently there will be some people who will want to have monogamous relationships, some people will want to keep their relationship open, some people will only consider it a one-time fling, so on and so forth. So it really is depending on the character and then depending on how you approach the relationship, which I think is pretty cool, pretty dynamic, a way to approach romances in a video game. And of course, when I play the game, I will keep you guys updated with what I'm doing with it. And of course, I'll have a review at some point when I get further enough to have an actual review with substance. Next. It's getting pretty heated on Twitter. There is some beefs going on. The miniseries When We Rise, if you guys don't know the miniseries When We Rise, came out a couple weeks ago to like a month ago uh, here in America. And it was supposed to, it was about uh, LGBT rights and the LGBT rights movement in California. I haven't seen it. I probably should see it. First, Sarah Ramirez, which by the way, Sarah Ramirez, I'll have a video link up here. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about how she went to Twitter to uh, protest against The Real O'Neills, the TV show, for saying that they had a joke that was offensive to bisexual people. Well, she's being a very strong advocate for, bisex for bisexual community because she took to Twitter once again and made a message statement uh, saying how the Will We Rise was completely neglectful of the bisexual perspective during that time. Dustin Lance Black, who is the writer for the show, uh, he went to Twitter and said, uh, you're wrong, there were bisexual people. And then all of bisexual Twitter went, took to Twitter and were like, where? Then there was all kinds of beef happening. Uh, By Night USA got involved, uh, Elio Cruz Lupez got involved, uh, bisexual.org. A whole bunch of people, right? At the end of the day though, Sarah Ramirez took to Twitter and then she said, hey, uh, Dustin Lance Black, message me, DM me, and we can talk about uh, future projects or something to get the bisexual perspective out there and bisexual history and all that. So there was beef, there was anger, but it looks like there might be a better solution on the horizon. And yeah, maybe I'll go see the miniseries at some point, I don't know. Next, Brianna Hildebrand, who played Negasonic Teen Warhead uh, in Deadpool, is actually going to be playing in a lesbian romance film, a teen lesbian romance film. The film will be called First Girl I Loved. There's already a trailer out. Apparently this movie is actually right on the horizon, so uh, yeah, totally missed that. But there is a trailer in the description down below. Uh, she is apparently playing a baseball player who meets a journalist uh, for the high school that she goes to, and the two fall in love. The journalist played by Dylan Galula, however, who, by the way, uh, was in the first season of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Great show. She is having a kind of conflict with a best friend who wanted to be more, and then once he finds out, oh, you're in this lesbian thing, he has a bad reaction to it. So once again, there's a trailer for this, go check it out. This is a little note, but Jazz Jennings, who had a reality TV show around the time when this trans awareness happened, she had a reality TV show that is 
still pretty popular, and now she actually has a doll that's being created in her image. So that's cool. Uh, it's actually being presented towards uh, children, so it's going to be a little LGBT representation, and one that I think even the most conservative people won't be too offended by. Of course, you know, people will always find offense to something. Look at Beauty and the Beast. Charlize Theron, the uh, Academy Award winner, is actually going to be playing a bisexual agent in an upcoming film. Uh, this film will be called Atomic Blonde. There is a trailer out. I put it on the Facebook group for Queer Fidanci. Uh, go check that out. I'll also have a link in the description, of course. I don't really know much of this story. Uh, the trailer didn't really say much of the story, but it is a very action-packed, uh, super agent kind of movie. And she's bisexual, so go check it out. Lastly, we have a few Kickstarters, one that's doing terribly, and one that's doing very, very well. First, we have Eden's Mercy, which yes, is the one that's doing terribly. They have about six days left before Eden's Mercy's Kickstarter ends, and they only have $10,000 out of the 50000 that they are trying to get. So guys, if you actually want to see Yabara, if you want to see Eden's Mercy become a thing in a much faster time, then please back the Kickstarter, link in the description. Though I will say that when I had the Q&A with uh, the Eden's Mercy team, I did specifically ask what will happen if the Kickstarter doesn't actually go, because that was what, two weeks ago? And it was back at 10,000 back then. So they have not really gained any traction with that Kickstarter. But anyway, they said that you will still get Eden's Mercy, just it'll take longer to get out there for us. In addition, you won't get the extra bonuses that you would have gotten when backing the Kickstarter, like the Fujoshi, Fidanchi, Beanie, um, the, um, what is it, Velvet Toucher, Calendar, all that. So if you guys want all that extra stuff and to get Eden's Mercy in your hands faster, then please back the Yerbara Kickstarter. Go check it out, link in the description. In addition to that, we have another Kickstarter that had major success as opposed to the Eden's Mercy one. Um, specifically, it has 55 days to go and it already has not only maxed out of its original goal of 20,000, but it's actually currently at this moment at 32,000, about to be 33,000. So this is very good. But what is it? Essentially, it is a visual novel, a dating game, a dating sim, um, but it's a BL Yaoi twist, and it is called Full Service. And essentially, it is that you are playing a young um, workaholic named Tomoki Nakamoto. And essentially, he decides to go to this spa to get a massage, and that's where you can meet a whole bunch of attractive men that you can romance. Essentially, that's the storyline that's not much so far, but it's only in the Kickstarter phase. This is pre-Pre-Alpha. There is a demo out, so if you guys want to check it out, I'll have a link to where you can uh, get the demo, as well as a link to the Kickstarter, as always. In addition to that, if you guys want to kickstart the game and get the game, then you can back it for $25 and you'll get the digital version. Uh, if you back it for $50, you'll get the digital version, but you also get the OST and some digital wallpapers. And if you back it at $75, you'll get the digital and you'll get the physical version. So yeah, and of course some extra stuff as well. I don't want if you pledge for more. If you back it now, it's already confirmed that it will go through. So there's no kind of danger like there is with Eden's Mercy. And that is it for this weekly update. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. If you have any thoughts on any of these new stories, I love talking with you guys, so let's get talking. In addition to that, if you like this video, make sure to like it, to share it with your friends, and to subscribe if you haven't already. Queer Finance tries to share LGBTQ and BL media through news, reviews, and good conversation. So let's get talking. Bye. Sorry, I'm set. That's, don't do this, Devin. And yeah, maybe I'll go see the miniseries at some point, I don't know.